physician in the practice of medicine includes the details of people, certain places, particular problems that Jesus erases and encounters as he travels from one destination to another. Can I put a pause right there immediately? Jesus was always on the move. He helps us to understand that in order for the gospel to get to everybody, the gospel must have a pedestrian mentality. Luke's framework is like the borders of a life-size puzzle with all the pieces being in place around the edges, but now the inner picture must be put together. Luke mentions Mary called Magdalene, who had seven devils exercised out of her, Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's steward, Susanna, and many others who minister unto him out of their suffering. Luke, in the tradition of his day, used language to describe the identity of people by their problem, often caused maybe behind them an oppressive society. Notation is clear that Mary may have had some uncontrollable actions and urges that could not be monetized by those who wanted to profit off of her. See, we don't have any record as to who helped Mary with her demons. It's always tension here for us to assume that her demons were not caused by uh, how she may have been marginalized, abused, neglected, or sidelined. See, unless her demons were uh, having her character or she was acting violent or causing harm to herself, the questions of her demons is always left as an open-ended, unresolved concept. Notation is clear again that the text is careful to include many other no-name women who ministered to Jesus out of their substance. Luke opens this chapter with Jesus going into every city, preaching and showing the things of the kingdom, which was of the correcting of the injustices that kept people in bondage. See, the kingdom is not about who's in charge or who is on top, who calls the big shots, but about living a balanced life. The kingdom is about fairness. It's about good virtues toward others, extending grace and mercy to the least and the less fortunate. The kingdom, my brothers and sisters, is about developing a school system for children so that they can get the proper education for the volatile job market that is flooded with uncertainties and unpredictable outcomes. The kingdom is about human rights and equal rights, living rights, fair wages, no sexism, no classism, no homophobicism, no hateration, or no foolishness in people's lives. However, the narrative shifts once a great crowd gathers to hear a parable, a parable about the sower of the seeds and the grounds that the seeds fell upon. Jesus shares this word that the seed is the word of God. And then four miracles happen that are couched that show each of us the levels of faith demonstrated in this story. Please note that the ones whose faith was really on shaky ground were the disciples who were in the same boat with Jesus. At verse 20, 20, 22, uh, shocking is the reality that many had been in the company with Jesus, working with Jesus, being poured in by Jesus, but still had their faith on shaky ground. In verse number 26, we encounter a brother who is full of demonic mental spirits. He dwelled in a dead place. He lived a dead man's life. He was dead, walking around dead. And when he meets Jesus, he worships, he cries, chains are broken, demons are released, fetters are fractured, bands are broken, and evangelism is launched. Can I put a pause there? When you get free, you want to go tell somebody else how good the Lord has been to you. In verse 41 and 54, we see that Jairus' 12-year-old daughter is sick, and her daddy comes to Jesus looking for Jesus to hurry up to her bedside. And, he, and as soon as he gets there, but it was not without delay, because there was a demonstration of faith that stood out in the hallmark of time. We know it as the woman with the issue of love. 
In verse 36, we have a contrasting complex consternation with a sister who is at the point of desperation. What do you do when you have run out of options, exhausted all resources, and have come to the point that you have no other place to go? Have you ever been in that place when it seems as if, if you don't get up and do something, then nothing is really going to change? There is some four lepers over in the Old Testament who can testify this. We talked about a week or so ago who decided that if they did not get up and change their situation, they were going to have to deal with dying where they were. Let me introduce you to this sister. Extra biblical revelation helps us to understand that her name was Veronica, who has an inside issue that may have been caused by some outside extremities. Her issue, according to Dr. Luke, is incurable with the known remedies of her day. Could it be? Her issue may have been from living in a society that takes the living rights from women, denies women comparable pay, denies women control over their bodies, denies women the access of corporate success, denies women the equality in all areas of life, denies women equality in ministry, and denies women their own humanity, that's enough to make you depressed. That's enough to make you want to give up and quit. That can make you feel like you're at the point of desperation. She is also confronted with the press of a crowd. Crowds can be good if they are united for a good cause. A crowd changed the trajectory of the Birmingham boycott, bus boycott. A crowd marched on this very city, Washington, D.C., and laws got changed. A crowd changed the union status of workers to get fair pay in a fair market wages. She is at the point of desperation, and she is not in the mood for crowd negotiations. See, crowds uh, would decide her destiny because her physical condition was a ceremonial uncleanness according to the Leviticus law in Leviticus 12 and 1525. Crowds can be detrimental when the mentality of the crowd is divisive. Devices are, de de crowds are divisive in understanding the vision of ministry. Divisive in following leadership, they have their own mob mentality. Divisive in walking by faith and not by sight. Divisive in making history because they're caught up in tradition. Divisive in arguing upon the goals that must be reached regardless of our personal feelings. Consider this sister's predicament. What we have here, my brothers and sisters, is when desperation becomes your motivation for your elevation because your situation is not in line with divine creation, which is not your destination. My brothers and sisters, I promise you I'm not going to be before you long. Listen to this. Let me bag up because I'm having a few little mic issues this morning. Let me bag up. Kent, what do you do when your desperation becomes your motivation for your elevation because your situation is not in line with your divine creation, which is not your ultimate destination? My brothers and sisters, I want to argue a few things, and I promise you I'll get out of the way. Let me help you. Let me help you right here. Uh, she is at the point of desperation that places her, places her at the point of undeniable determination. She pressed her way through. Let me back that thing up because it's getting good to me, right? She is at the point of desperation that it places her at the point of undeniable determination. The Bible says she pressed her way through the crowd. My brothers and sisters, I reached out by here to tell somebody that in the midst of this pandemic, we're still going to have to press our way through. In the midst of everything that we're dealing with right now, we're still going to have to press our way through, regardless of what anybody has to say or to think or feel about what your situation is and how you're dealing with what you're dealing with. My brothers and sisters, you still going to have to learn how to press your way through. I like this sister. I, I like this sister because she helps me to understand regardless of what's going on, regardless of the pressure that society has placed upon you, regardless of the pains and the terror that you have to deal with sometimes, you and I are going to have to learn how to press 
our way through because when it's in the pressing that God has a blessing because when we press our way through, it's a open demonstration that we believe everything that God has already told us and that we believe that God is able to keep his word even when we don't believe his word. So in my brothers and sisters, I stopped by here to tell somebody that in the midst of this pandemic, you and I are going to have to learn how to press our way through. Not only, not only does a sister teach us something about undeniable determinism, but she's at the point of desperation that places her at the point of undeniable determination that pushes her to the point of unwavering dedication. Listen to this. If you're going to press your way through, you also need to understand you're going to have to pierce your way through. Uh, 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 she pressed, but in order for her to get to Jesus, she had to pierce the crowd. Uh, sometimes you're going to have to cut through some stuff that's been in your way. I wish I had somebody here. And the word of God is a sword. And if you use the word on the situation, God will allow the word to pierce you through all of the stuff that's trying to stop you from doing what the Lord has called you to do. Can I stop by here to help somebody? Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, you're going to have to accept some people can't go where God is sending you because God is piercing them out of your way. I stopped by here to tell somebody, you better be encouraged today. I might get happy all by myself, but God, sometimes when he gets ready to elevate you, he has to cut some people away from you because they can't go to the next level. Uh, 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 ooh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. They tell me that snakes are only comfortable in low altitude territory. Uh, 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 if you remember in the garden, the snake had the ability to walk and roam. And because of the snake's uh, deceptiveness, God cursed the snake to crawl around on his belly. And they tell me there is an altitude called the snake line. Where if God is getting ready to lift you up to the point that the snake that used to swimmer around your life will not be able to breathe at that altitude. And so that's the reason why some people get pierced out of your life. Come here, I need to bless somebody because you, you need this help this morning. I don't care if you had to go through a divorce or separation or a breakup. Maybe it's a divine piercing by God to release you for you to fly where God will want you to go. Let me bag that thing up because Rev, I'm getting happy all by myself. Maybe just maybe God is allowing some people not to be in your life because God knows that they are the snakes that have been biting your potential. They have been getting their venom on your reputation. They have been doing what I call backdoor assassination and God has allowed you to, to, to elevate and to escalate above the snake line and some people just can't fly where God has for you to go. I wish I had somebody here to give God praise or somebody on the, on, on the internet to give God praise. God has allowed you to rise above the snakes in your life and God has given you the power to soar. So don't you get upset when they leave. Don't you get mad when they don't understand God has a design for you that may have a required for you to fly above the snake line. Uh, uh, mm, uh, here it is. Here it is. Uh, she has undeniable uh -huh, determination that puts it to the point of unwavering dedication. Listen to this. It also produces a prize of unequaled destination. Uh, uh, she pressed her way through uh, and then she pierced her way through. Here it is. Here it is. Right here. Then she purposed her way through. Um, mm, uh, there is a text that says, um, they that come to Lord come to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Uh, 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 oh, I like that because 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 she had a purpose in mind when she saw that Jesus was available. Uh, she had her mind made up because there's another rendition of the text that said that she started talking to herself. And when she started talking to herself, the conversation was this. 
Uh, she, she started talking to herself and herself started talking to her and she started talking to herself and she said these words. It's recorded. It's in another gospel. It says, and she said to herself, if I can just get close enough to get to Jesus, whatever I'm dealing with will be all right. And let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, you got to have that kind of thinking in your life that no matter what the situation looks like now, if I can get to Jesus, everything is going to be all right. I need to back that thing up because I'm getting happy all by myself. Listen to She came to Jesus with the idea that whatever was wrong with her before she got to Jesus, her purpose was to get to Jesus so that anything that used to be wrong with her would no longer be wrong with her. <laughs> uh, let me tell you something. Uh, uh, mm, God can give you enough grace to bleed for 12 long years and you still don't die. 